Hello everyone and welcome to another IndieX 2020 showcase. Today we're going to be here with Ian Beckman, the director and programmer for Cosmos uh, Quick Stop, a very interesting little game which I'm sure we <laughs> is very excited to talk about. Uh, how are you doing, Ian? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. So uh, for those who don't know, uh, IndieX 2020 is basically an indie showcase where we are trying to gather and showcase some of the best indies internationally and nationally, of course. And uh, Cosmos Quick Stop is one of our 40 finalists this year. Uh, so we are very glad to have him here. And we are glad that Ian Beckman himself gave us a little bit of his personal time because it's like not everyone is able to do it. And sometimes uh, schedules don't match up. But we are very glad to have you here, Ian. And thank you once again for giving us your time. Uh, my pleasure, my pleasure. So for those who are not familiar with Cosmos Quick Stop, can you give us a little bit of an elevator pitch about uh, what the game is? Sure. So Cosmos Quick Stop is a fast-paced interstellar gas station management game. <laughs> um, you know, the typical genre. Yeah. Uh, so basically you play as a janitor in a space gas station, um, and all these aliens are showing up and they want things from you. They might want their spaceship washed, they might need to use the glorp rooms. They might want a hot coffee shower. Um, so you're running around to little specific spots in the station, uh, performing little mini games to complete these tasks for the aliens before they get too mad and leave. Um, so it's very uh, high energy, frantic. You're just trying to stay on top of everything um, and try not to get overwhelmed. Yes, exactly. Uh, we actually for the audience's information uh, today, uh, we are going to be playing single player, but you can of course play the double player. And that, I mean, that's a lot of fun. Every time you have multiplayer, it just enhances the experience. So please have that in mind. Um, I think do you, you have a demo right now also on Steam? So of course, if people want to go check it out, it's in our website. If you go to our website, there's a, a square there uh, with uh, the Cosmos Quick Stop. If you press it, there's a link to the Steam shop. So if you want to try out the game, feel free because it's really, really fun. And it's really quick, quirky and zany. Uh, so it's really good if you want to also play with kids. Uh, very family friendly. Uh, and it's got lots of humor. Uh, but having said that, I think it's time to show the people what they truly want, which is, of course, the game and trying to see me at the same time, try to ask you questions, <laughs> respond coherently while trying to keep the quick stop working. And let's see what we can do about that. So now let's switch into the game. Mind that there sometimes. OK, very good. Let's see if the game is picking up, because sometimes there are some issues with the game picking up. <laughs> Things never work as planned. Let's check. I think we are now live and unmuted. So uh, very sorry, everyone. We had a major crash with Streamlabs OBS. So we had to reboot everything and set everything back up again. Uh, so if there's any problems, please let us know. Uh, but yeah, we're here back once again. Uh, now we are actually going to play the game. Let's take a look. So uh, Ian actually and his team actually had the the let's say the good idea of making a Halloween level. So that's what mm -hmm. we are going to be taking a look at today. Uh, I've already okay. gone through the tutorial, so I think it's going to, unless it's like fill, filled with curveballs, everything should go awesome. <laughs> uh, it's it's certainly easier than challenge mode, but it's uh it's got some it's got some fun stuff in there. So we'll yeah. see what happens. <laughs> yeah, okay, let's go. So Ian, um, when you first had the idea to make this game, right? Uh, how did you feel at the time? What was the, the ideas behind the development team? Uh, did you come up with the idea yourself? Was it a team effort? Uh, talk us about the beginning stages of the development for this game. Sure. Um, so it kind of came out of a, a game jam we did you know, four or five years ago um, where uh, basically we made this little game where um, you were working in a call center in hell. Um, <laughs> Uh, so uh, basically, like people would request, like, oh, I need possessed Ouija boards, or like you would need to go uh, make things speak in tongues or whatever. Um, it was just a small little game jam game. Um, but uh, this is we did this game jam while we were um, working on another project, um, and then uh, about a couple months later, we ended up canceling that uh, that first project. So we were like, okay, well, what should we do now? Um, we had a lot of fun working on this. Uh, call center game so maybe we should look into that but get rid of the religious overtones and maybe just put it in space <laughs> um yeah so that's kind of where it came from 
Um, we were inspired a lot by uh, games like uh, Cook Serve Delicious um, oh, or like yeah. Overcooked. Yeah. Um, so we were kind of like looking how we could bring our kind of unique animation and 3D art talents to kind of a, a more full world of uh, what we could create, you know? Okay. Oh. <laughs> Watch out for those guys, yeah. I actually don't know what this is because it's very different from the tutorial. So I'm actually like a bit like, oh no, I don't know what is happening. But, but. Uh, yeah, the Halloween, the Halloween level is a little different. Um, but I think you already figured out those potato things. Um, which Yeah, the potato things yeah, are really it, good, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I think the other, other stuff is you're in a three arm. Oh, yeah. So you can... Uh, five, 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 um, four, there's, five. Yeah, so there's more um, more docs for you to kind of deal with and stuff. But uh, in general, you should be pretty close to the tutorial. Um, hmm. Do you know so what like that a... lightning means? Oh, yeah. So those are the electro, electro spa therapy, mm -hmm. um, which is one of the inner ring things. Uh, so that's not that one. Uh, yeah. There, you were looking at it right before. Uh, yeah. No, this is the also. Uh, uh, no. I also need to do this one actually. Though. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> okay, good. Yes, there you go. Straight ahead. Uh, right behind you, basically. Uh, this? No, this is the asteroid. No. <laughs> oh, inner ring. Okay, when you mean inner ring, something like this. Yeah. So that's the animatronic band, which you can turn on, oh, which uh, calms okay. aliens down. I do um, that. and then one more, one more over would be the electro. There you go. Okay. So how that, yeah, how that one works is uh, you turn it on and then it runs for a while. And if you forget to turn it off, it will overheat and break. Oh, okay, good. Um, so, so you want yeah, to make sure you turn it on. Uh, the left or right columns. Okay. Uh, run over. There you go. Yeah. This is an <laughs> asteroid? Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> it's well, tough. Is this yeah. game so crazy, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And because I, I was like, wait. I am not, I don't know any of these things. What is happening at the moment? But yeah, you live and learn, I guess. So yes. number five, what is it? okay here. Yeah. So for people watching, um, basically uh, this would be kind of a level about halfway through the campaign. Um, you've got six docking stations as opposed to the four docking stations you have. In the tutorial. Um, you have okay. slightly different amenities. Uh, you have the the Electro, we looked at the Abracafabulous, which is, the okay, here. Um, yeah, there you go. Um, and so it's it's a little rough just jumping in right here if you don't, yeah. if you're not <laughs> fully trained on it. <laughs> but honestly, you're doing a really good job. Okay, oh my god, number one, <laughs> potato. Okay, let's go to the potato and also the zappy zappies. Yeah, but as you can see, it's absolutely. A huge amount of fun because <laughs> you just everything <laughs> happens at the same time and you're like oh my god what no yeah, yeah. and well, oh. oh but this is actually much better because like when i was playing i had uh, the doubt like okay this is asteroid okay yeah asteroid go, go, yeah. Go, go. <laughs> i had the doubt like oh but if it's only these kinds of things right then it's not going to be uh let's say entertaining enough but now that i see that you mm -hmm. have like a whole bunch of different things they had much better like there's no way that you can keep track of every single thing oh did i not <laughs> did i not turn off the thingy let's check no i did not oh it broke yeah okay cool. <laughs> so it's recharging right now yeah um so yeah it's uh you know in the campaign mode which is what we've been actively developing mm -hmm. um there's 19 different mini games um that you can equip um and then each one of those mini games has four to six different upgrades that you can get for them which uh, sometimes make the game easier, sometimes make the game harder, but they make you more money. Um, and then the capstone abilities kind of like drastically change how you interact with that mini game. Um, so with the, all the different mini, uh, mini games you can equip, all the different upgrades, um, and then different weather and day effects you um, can have, I think there's about 30 plus million variations of station layout. So there is there is a lot to do in the game. Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah, but I I'm kind of starting to get the hang of it, obviously. But I'm coming yeah. from the from let's say a compromised situation, but it's not <laughs> okay. So it's also it's 
It's hard to talk and play at the same oh, time. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. Okay, where is this? Is here. Potato. Potato. Grab the potato and go. <laughs> Where's the zappy thing? Zappy, zappy, zappy. Hello, zap you. Nice. Okay, let me just hang around and try to. Okay, now I can turn it off. Bam. Yep. Cool. Okay, four as well. And now <laughs> three in water fails, so no problem. Okay. Fill up the snacks. Da, 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 da. Boof. And also. Da, 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 da. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> Not exactly amazing, but that was certainly Not really awesome. <laughs> <laughs> not bad for a first try on the yeah, Halloween yeah. level, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah I, I was looking for those uh, the, the just the simple things from the tutorial, and then suddenly I see mm -hmm. four things I don't know what it is, and I'm like, oh no! <laughs> but it's, it's yeah. really awesome, I love it. It's so, did you always have this ambition to work, to make a um, fully-fledged uh, campaign from the start of the, the project? Um, it was always kind of uh, the plan, but we definitely focused a lot of the first kind of year, two years of development on just kind of a score attack mode mm -hmm. um, because we were going to a lot of conventions, stuff like that, and we wanted a good go. um, kind of base for people to play. Um, and so once we got to that point where it's like a lot of tweaking on like, okay, how do we teach these concepts? How do we, um, you know, what, what's the uh, right level, difficulty level for people uh, getting in multiplayer, things like that. Once we kind of um, settled on how we wanted to deal with that stuff, then we started working on that campaign mode, um, which has been a ton of fun, but has brought a lot of uh, unique challenges to it as well. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, so this this is what, for, so people can see at home, this is what a normal level looks like. I mean, it's still going to be frank, <laughs> frantic, and you're still going to be running around, but it's a little bit more manageable because you have yeah. less, as you can see, you have less uh, gates and you have less um, less options for, for doing stuff. So it's much, 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 much more easy. Okay. Yeah. Good. Ready to unlock. Okay. I love that you inserted this option to uh, like Insta and lock things. So like you just need the mm -hmm. press of a button and you're ready to go because that really makes things easier. Otherwise it would be, uh, imagine having to run all the way back to the every single gate every time you wanted to unlock something. Now you just have to be yeah, paying attention yeah. and just tam, tam, tam. So I mean, I guess that yeah. was the biggest challenge with this game was actually making it uh, reaching the sweet spot where you know that people are kind of freaked out uh, and they're not yeah. exactly on control of everything, but they're still like, they feel like they're not 100%, like not even doing anything at, at any given time. So how, <laughs> what do you think helped you along that process of like iteration and, and finding the, the exact sweet spot for all of these kind of things? Yeah, um, no, you're, you're totally right. It's been, uh, it's been a challenge finding that. Um, you know, the, I think the biggest thing for us was um, going to lots of different conventions. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you bring you you bring a brand new build. You might have just redone the tutorial, something like that. You sit it down. Um, you get hundreds of people playing it over the course of a couple days, um, and you find out real quick what's uh, working or not working. <laughs> yeah, people, um, and so usually very yeah, critical. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Um, and you know, it's. Interesting too, like where we will find the sticking points where, um, you know, just watching people play will be like, oh, they didn't understand this mechanic or um, they are getting lost or, you know, they need um, the aliens to kind of maneuver in a different way or things like that. So um, we've just been tons and tons of iteration. I mean, I think we're on, uh, I think we recently just did like the 40th version of the tutorial, um, just really trying to knock it uh, nail it down and like make it uh flow well enough and have enough stuff to do but not overwhelm and it's also i mean it's a challenge for um making a tutorial for a convention is very different than making it for the campaign mode uh mm -hmm. convention you know people often you know they've got you know 10 minutes to for your game if that um so you got to make things fast you, you can't put in a lot of extra stuff um but this new version of the tutorial we just did for campaign mode, we've slowed things down, uh, add a lot more fluff in there, which is really nice. Okay, awesome. Do you have an idea when you, you're going to be done or at least able to present some kind of uh, demo or presentation on the, um, the story mode, the campaign? Um, 
We're still working hard on it. We're not sure um, quite when it's going to come um, be done. Uh, basically, we're in kind of this state where um, like all of the mini games are kind of done, all of the upgrades are done. Uh, we're kind of doing some final art passes and stuff like that. Uh, but we really are focusing on how uh, the pacing of the campaign goes because we we really want you know people not to get bored of the game um but we also want to make sure we kind of divvy out the content we've created in a without overwhelming the player at the same time so it's like you know when do we make the change from this station layout to the you know the six docking station layout or the eight docking station layout Mm -hmm. um you know yeah there's even more (laughs) um you know, when do we introduce the extra amenities? Um, how do we want the different costumes to unlock? Um, when do we want the boss fights to happen? Um, oh, nice boss fights. You know, yeah, there's even boss fights in it. Uh, so it's very much, you know, figuring out that difficulty, figuring out the pacing um, to kind of make a, a campaign mode that people will really enjoy. And, you know, we're getting close. We've been doing a lot of play testing and stuff like that. Um, but you know, we're not going to release the game until we feel like it's, you know, mm-hmm. really, really strong. Very good. Okay, okay, <laughs> good. Nice. And relating to the art, I, the, the, the art for this game is really nice, like with lots of details, mm-hmm. like you have a solid uh, art direction. I find it to be like almost 90s cartoon, something like that. Could you talk a bit about uh, what kind of uh, inspirations did you have for the art or how did you choose this direction for the game? For sure. So um, this art uh, is the brainchild mostly of um, our 3D modeler, Brian Kalen, um, who, uh, you know, I think this is kind of a close to his natural style of um, uh, modeling and things like he can do everything, but like, this is a very comfortable style for him. Mm-hmm. Um, and at the same time, um, the other two um, artists on the team, well, Aaron, who does all the animations and stuff, and me, who I do programming, but uh, I used to be an animator in the industry, um, mm-hmm. all really want to focus on cartoony, uh, unrealistic animation and art because, um, you know, as an animator in the industry, for years past, I was working a lot on motion capture, uh, realistic animations and stuff like that. Um, and just got so sick of kind of being um, constrained by reality. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, we're making video something games. different. Yeah, we could do whatever we want. So, um, you know, that inspired a lot. Um, and then, you know, we bring in influences from our childhoods, like 90s cartoons, 100%. Um, but also, you know, Things like Futurama or like yeah. Rick and Morty, um, those things, and then also games like uh, you know Ratchet and Clank. You know, definitely we bring a lot from that, or um, kind of those cartoony 3D platformers. Um, so it's definitely been a focus for us, um, and you know we really want it to be front and center for everybody. So we, often we even kind of make the art first and then decide the mechanics afterwards. Um, oh, so you're doing challenge mode now? Yeah, yeah, just um, to to check it out, to show everyone what it could be. <laughs> it has a couple new features. So in fact, first, let's start to this. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, so this is kind so, of the tutorial that I wanted uh, for the other thing. Okay, okay, okay. For Halloween, yeah. yeah. I will say challenge mode is uh, a lot harder than Halloween mode, though. So, <laughs> fair warning. <laughs> okay. So. Okay. You mentioned that like feedback is absolutely crucial uh, to to the process of finding out like um, what works and what doesn't work, and also obviously like showing people the, the game. But in this year, like you, that that has been kind of rough, right? You, you haven't had the the, the chance to oh, yeah. uh, to show people the uh, the the game, at least not in person, of course. Uh, so yeah. How did you did you were you able to come up with other methods of finding same feedback? Did you find that they were not as efficient, or if they were as efficient, like uh, what? How, how did you make it through the year, basically? <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, yeah, no, it's a lot tougher. Um, I think in mean, this year we've had a lot less um, 
quantity of feedback, you know, like going to a convention, having 100, 200, 300 people play the game, you got a lot of really kind of instant feedback, but it's not super in depth. Um, for this year, we've been focusing more on kind of long play sessions, um, things like that. And so what we'll do is we'll kind of have um, uh, friends or family or volunteers um, kind of play the campaign mode, which, mm -hmm. you know, it can take 10 plus hours to get through it all. Um, and they'll just be screen recording and uh, recording their kind of thoughts on the whole time. Um, and then we'll just kind of take in those um, recordings, kind of look um, at what's happening, see what they're saying, see what they're doing, um, and kind of see where it's at. But it's we've really been focusing a lot of on kind of the micro frustrations of the game. Mm. So, you know, if someone plays a game for 10 minutes and something frustrates them, a small thing does, you know, it's not going to leave much of a last lasting kind of dent in their gameplay experience. But if there's something that's frustrating them and they're playing the game for a couple hours, like that frustration is going to build up. Um, and since this game is already kind of um, intense and the kind of the stress and emotional levels that you're getting for these different gameplays, if we're really trying to just smooth everything out so you can really, you know, nothing gets in your way of having fun and kind of, you know, doing the best of your ability. And that, you know, that's a lot of UI improvements, uh, kind of control improvements for different mini games. Um, and also like adjusting difficulty levels to make sure like, you're not getting in over your head, um, yeah. but also the game's not boring at the same time. So that one you gotta hold the button and yeah, there you go. Uh, I had a brain freeze for a moment. <laughs> so this is it happens. Good. Okay, six, six is right here. Okay, good. So see to be, yeah, good, let's go. And five. where is the, there's a zap on my finger, it's over there, okay, let's <laughs> go. Uh, okay, good. Let's go. Do, 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 do. <laughs> the song was made. The song was made for for by someone on the team, or was it um, how was it contracted outside? Yeah, so um, we hired a company called Team Audio to do all the music and sound effects for us. Um, originally, in the very first versions of the game, um, all of the sounds in the game were just me. Uh, and our animator, Aaron, uh, just making mouth noises yeah. um, and stuff like that, uh, which, you know, was was cheap and it was fun, but at, we're not professional audio people. Um, and, you know, when we brought in these professionals, they replaced the vast majority of that with a lot higher quality um, kind of sound effects, which is, you know, the game's greatly improved from it. Um, so we're super happy to be uh, working with them on it. Um, yeah for sure like everything comes together when when like people don't even notice most of the time uh sound but it's mm -hmm. super important for the final game in terms of like yeah making sure that everything is satisfying and everything is is like uh, comes together efficiently okay. yeah definitely you uh, were not we've been... when you said this is <laughs> probably okay but not so bad i'm not doing awful so i'm happy uh, how, how can yeah, I deal yeah. with this monstrosity? Oh, ah, okay, I know. I have, uh, to, I have to go through the... Yeah, I got to use... Exactly. Okay, go. go, go. <laughs> okay, go. Oh. Yeah. Okay. One, of the, one of the fun things in the, the campaign is uh, we have these special alien days that happen where we kind of... A new alien comes to the um, quick stop for the first time. Mm -hmm. And um, we have special uh, music tracks just for those aliens. Um, and so these, you know, these cactus little guys have like kind of a Western theme um, and uh, different ones have kind of different instrumentals and stuff like that. So it's a nice little change up um, on the main theme. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah, because yeah. I, I also, I guess, like if, if it's the same music over and over and over, that could also turn into like a micro frustration, right? Yeah, Obviously. for sure. And it's uh, uh, right. something we're looking with. Um, yeah, the sound and the music's hard for us because it's most probably the our team's le uh, weakest point. You yeah. know, none of us have a ton of experience with it, so it's always, you know, 
it means we have to contract external help, which is expensive. Um, and so it's, you know, what's the perfect balance of um, how much music we need in the game versus, you know, our budget for sound and stuff like that. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you, you could use the animatronic band to calm everybody down. Oh, okay. Oh, weird. There it goes. Here. Oh, yeah, that helps. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Not doing it with the maps. Would you say the game is harder uh, on, on controller or mouse and keyboard in personal experiences? Um, I prefer mouse and keyboard. Mm -hmm. Other people's other people on the dev team perform perform uh, or uh, like controller better. Uh, so it's kind of a toss up. Um, I think controller might be a smidge easier, um, mm -hmm. but I mean, I I do most of the initial prototyping, um, uh, game design stuff, and co and controls, and I always prototype mouse and keyboard first. Oh no! Uh, just, okay. <laughs> just because it's easier, you know, that way I don't have to load up a controller every time I want to play. Yeah, exactly. Ooh, yeah, I think we're almost done with challenge mode. Okay, so yeah. we're okay, and uh, let's go here. Okay, we're good. Uh, glorp. Uh, <laughs> okay, good, 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 good. So you you can play. Uh, oh, you can play uh, online multiplayer. Obviously, is there local co-op as well, or are you thinking of adding it? So there is um, there is local co-op co -op, and the the online is is through Steam Remote Play. So. Um, it's one of those things that uh, Steam kind of handles that. Mm -hmm. So the net, we didn't have to do any net code or anything like that, which is super nice. Yeah. Um, so we basically like designed the game for local co-op, and then Steam was like, "Well, we can do that online too." And we we're like, "Ah, oh, sure. If you want to do that, go for it." <laughs> nice. Uh, but it's a it's a lot of fun. Um, the multiplayer, obviously, you can imagine. You know, having someone else. Uh, Helping you with these tasks and stuff is definitely uh, beneficial. Yeah, and it's kind um, of like in Overcooked, uh, it's a friendship ruiner in the best sense, yeah. <laughs> sentence, right? In the best way of the word. It's, I lost the count of how many times I was like screaming at my friends over, over these kind of <laughs> things, but it's always awesome to, 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 yeah. like a bit of, a bit of chaos is, is always, I say, fruitful to a relationship. Yeah. Oh, okay. I actually did something. What? Ah, new high score. There you go. Nice. So how much, <laughs> just on a personal note, how much do you do usually? Uh, Score-wise? Yeah. Um, well, it's funny you ask. Uh, let's see. Let me look. Our, we, recently, we recently just did a little um, dev team tournament, and it looks like the high score was... Uh, 1100 points i think Ooh. something like that oh yeah combos probably <laughs> right combos yeah the combos yeah and that was multiplayer too so oh, um nice. you normally score a little higher in multiplayer but uh you can definitely uh, crack a thousand points uh, yeah. uh in single player if you're really going going at it i'm gonna try halloween again just because now i have the advantage of yeah. understanding this a little bit better do you have any particular stories that you would like to share with us from developing this game? It can be any kind of story, like funny, sad, happy, whatever. Just something that you would mm. like to share with everyone. Sure. Um, I think uh, one of one of my funny stories I like to share is uh, when we were early early prototyping this game, um, we had a lot, a lot of ideas about what, what we wanted to add to the game. Mm -hmm. um, and we had a lot to learn about what was actually fun for the player to do, opposed to what was fun in our brains. Um, and so one of the early mechanics um, was actually mandatory naps. Hmm. Um, and so you would get, similar to a kind of an asteroid alert, you would get a mandatory nap alert, um, and you would have to stop everything you're doing, run to the break room, and... Uh, press Z as fast as you could to um, take a nap. Uh, take a nap as fast as you could. Oh my! Uh, before you, could... <laughs> yeah. Um, so 
that was one of those ideas that was really funny in our brains. But as soon as we put in the game, we're like, oh my God, this is not fun. This is so like, oh, infuriating almost. Um, yeah. So there's been a lot of um, kind of developments like that where we thought were good ideas. And then, you know, you actually play them and you're just like, oh, no way, no way. Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, yeah. Um, other other fun stories are just uh, going to conventions and stuff like that, having people play the game, um, you know, and you have people say like, "Oh, it's like the Dark Souls of Whack a Mole." Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's oddly, oddly, I can understand that kind of comment. Yeah, <laughs> it's like you have um, to direct your attention everywhere at all times. Yeah, seriously. Okay, good. <laughs> I think I'm getting yeah, a little bit potatoes. Tired. Yeah. Potato batteries. <laughs> okay, so where is okay, okay, I have to use a portal. Let's turn this off. Closer. Sex and it's okay, good. If you in the future, like if you had the chance to do any project in terms of uh you would have access to the best people, the best, the most time and huge funds. What do you think would you, you would like to do? And this isn't like limited to video games. It's whatever you want, like um, music, uh, books, movies. Mm. Is there um, any kind of dream project for you? I mean, I think, um, you know, it's funny. Uh, uh, Aaron, the animator, who um, she's actually my wife as well. Uh, we talk a lot about like, um, doing um kind of physical games or like things like escape rooms stuff like that mm. um some sort of blend of um video game and physical game that was kind of a, an experience for people um i think that would be so much fun to work on that's um, awesome i imagine you <laughs> doing this in real life like this game <laughs> It would be awesome to see people like running around and trying to actually complete yeah. tasks meaningfully. <laughs> okay, good, good. Um, one and two, one and two, one and two. What is it? Okay. Oh, hey, you have to use the portals. That's a really good um, a thing that you like the, the, the blocking, the blockade. That's a really good mechanic mm. because you have to yeah. Yeah, be like, oh, you can grab two potatoes. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Live you can. Learn. Yeah. I think uh, some of the upgrades for the potatoes is lo allows you to upgrade or grab four of them, I think. But yeah, yeah, the squeeb, the squeeb tentacles blocking stuff is really fun. Um, one of the boss fights is actually a super version of the squeeb. Basically, um, your rival plants this little tentacle monster um, in your station, and it's kind of it shows up, and it's not too bad. But then um, it ends up going through puberty, and it like goes crazy uh, when it's like constantly blocking the um the doors and it sometimes blocks the teleporters um and there's just like squeeb tentacles everywhere it's awesome um, that you have context uh, into based into the game that's that's awesome I yeah love it when yeah, you yeah. have like in in universe explanations for things <laughs> for sure yeah i mean it's uh you know the story mode we've put a lot of uh time into a uh, kind of uh putting in the jokes and stuff like that, but also, you know, we've hand animated cutscenes and stuff for that. So there's a lot of uh, fun lore and stuff going on. Uh, all the aliens have backstories about like where they came from, um, you know, why, why they look the way they do and why they behave the way they do. Um, so, I mean, that's working on that stuff is so fun because you just basically sitting in the room with, you know, the other devs being like, okay, what, you know, what's funny? Like what, what can we say that make each other laugh? Okay, that's what's making it into the game, you know? Nice. Yeah, that's that's probably... Brainstorming is one of the most awesome parts of game dev. Okay, nice. Yeah. So, okay, nobody needs a shock right now. So we are good in that. Just add this and then take care of number two. Just give this a whirl while we're here. Okay, good. I mean, I like it that... Yeah, you can see that I'm improving like ridiculously just yeah so it's good that yeah it's it, when you make a system that allows people like to improve really fast that's that's also awesome because i mean people feel like they're actually progressing and doing something and and, and they feel uh, engaged right they feel motivated to yeah. to get better every time 
that's also a really important part of, of developing games and um, you are also like doing game design obviously like I, I felt like from your description most of the team was involved in the in the part in the design aspect of the game right oh definitely um you know we are all you know contributing stuff and um yeah i mean it's you know there's no there's no uh, pride or hubris here it's you know whoever has got the best idea that's what we put in there nice okay seems like everything yeah broke 300 to plan okay good nice <laughs> let me check if we have some interesting questions in chat let's see oh yeah i think i didn't even mention it to people if you want we can you can leave uh, questions for ian in the chat uh, feel free to participate of course we're here to show the game but we're also here to to make people want to participate and want to talk about it and, and that's certainly one of the biggest parts of it is just asking questions just whatever comes to mind like you can ask about the design you can ask about uh, the art particular details uh, I don't know let's see oh but we already have some people over here okay we got lost in space the game looks really good love the original sound yeah. so see it's really positive for now so that's that's all thank you <laughs> so you mentioned before that you had the, the one of the most challenging aspects was was the the balancing and you're still actually involved directly in that part in, in balancing the the game making sure it's fun making sure it's challenging uh did you have any other part of the game that you found like not just challenging but also like uh like it motivated you it interested you it captivated you like you 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 you, you felt like it was something that you really enjoyed doing hmm yeah, I mean, I think there's um, a big part of what we really enjoy about the game. The design portion of it is how people kind of manipulate their controllers or interact with the game uh, for each mini game. So, like, as you're playing, like, the refill uh, mechanic, you actually have to move your mouse up and down. Um, and then there's other things that the beauty, you have to kind of twirl your mouse around. Um, there is a lot of ways we ask the player to kind of interact in these games. And it's the mini games themselves are normally like pretty simple. It's like once you kind of learn what you need to do, um, it, there's not too much challenge in them, but it's about having your hands almost have to dance around the controller or the keyboard. You know, you have to uh, input one way and put another way. And so, really uh, finding all those combinations, what's fun, what's asking too much of the player or too little, uh, has been interesting, especially. Um, getting everything working with a controller uh, because a controller, you know, has a lot less buttons than a yeah. keyboard. Um, and so all of a sudden we started to have to think like, we need these mini games to not conflict with each other. So like, you know, the beauty, Abrica, fabulous, like you lock, you press a, hold a button down and kind of it locks your camera in place while you're doing something. Well, you could also have a potato on your back, yeah. um, and you could be charging that while doing that. Um, and you know, so how you give different ways for the player to interact, and all of these things have to mesh perfectly, so you're not kind of stopping one thing from uh, working. So uh, that's been a lot of fun, just you know, um, asking players to kind of do unique inputs and stuff like that. And it's something that I feel like you don't see a lot in. Um, time management games like Overcooked, um, you know, is a great game. I love it. Aaron and I have played a ton of it, but you know, you're normally only pressing one button mm -hmm. to kind of interact with the world. Um, and so we wanted to see what we could do to get beyond that. Yeah, to make it really stand out. Yeah, because it, it, once every, you not only have to learn, uh, obviously, like the whole idea and the whole feeling of the game like game design so you you have to be in a certain mindset and the game teaches you so you have to be looking at this you have to be looking at that you should try like throughout the the, the the every path you're making you should be doing more than one thing so you should try to yeah to do things at the same time but then there's also the learning of the specific mini game so right exactly when you arrive mm -hmm. to the beginning game you're confronted with something that you don't know first you understand it then you find out how you do it you do it and then you start to master it or uh, learn new ways of doing it like as i learned uh, just in the last page so that i could have more than one potato i didn't know that so i was just standing there like pressing the button and trying to fill the potato while i could be grow going around and grabbing another potato and while i was yeah. going around i could have grabbed another thing so it really is not so simple it's quite 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 depth it has a lot of depth and yeah i, I can see how that would be 
very very interesting uh, to to play with and i know of course the the game right now i think is only sh uh, scheduled for pc right uh in steam uh, yeah we're only doing pc um we would love to port to consoles and stuff but uh we haven't made a decision about it yet yeah yeah no i was i was just saying that maybe uh like uh, we all know like uh, the, the the next gen consoles are coming this week i think the xbox was today and playstation is in like a few days so like mm -hmm. imagine the the kind of haptic feedback uh, and the uses one could do uh with those kinds of things so it's always interesting to try to squeeze as much as you can out of the the controller because uh, people look yeah. at the controller and think like okay this is just a controller right this is a button press this is something this is but if you can use the the controller to emulate what you're doing inside of the game then you bring a different kind of uh, interaction and and uh, immersion and yeah i i um, of course, I wasn't thinking about it while I was playing, be also because I was really, like, focused on and in the in the thing and and not really just okay. I do this, I do this, I do this. But like when you <laughs> leave the game uh, and you're you're looking at it from outside, you really you really start to see like oh yeah, it makes perfect sense that I've just grab this and like turn it around and instead of like actually just pressing a button right no i have to hold this and then i do up yeah. and down and up and down and up and down because yeah, yeah. yeah probably in the initial stages of the design you you the, the mini games were simpler right were more like okay press this or do this and then you mm -hmm. when you make that breakthrough that that's obviously amazing but that that's also the magic of or what i think is the magic of a little bit of game design is a lot of these things seem super obvious but they are not like when people start making a game, yeah. th these assumptions are not immediately clear to, to you. Right. So you don't immediately jump to, Oh yeah, but what if we do the same movement outside that you do inside? And when someone plays yeah. it, it's just natural. Like, Oh, why wouldn't I do this? It makes perfect sense. Right. So yeah, it takes, yeah. takes a lot of work and a, a lot of insight to, to do it. And I think you've managed to do it really well with this, this, this small game, let's say. Do you Thank have you. An, Thank you so much. Do you have like a an idea of uh, how much content will there be in the in the campaign? I know we are still working on it, so it's not. Yeah. So um, the campaign mode we're shooting for about uh, ten hours for an average playthrough. Uh, completionist uh, should be a lot more. Um, in that in those ten hours, there'll be uh, four boss fights that you have to get through. Mm -hmm. um, there'll be nineteen different uh, mini games that you unlock. Uh, each of those mini games will have four to six different upgrades for them, um, so that gives you, um, you know, tens of millions of different station layouts. Um, and then there's also, I think, I might, I can't quite remember the number, but about 25 different costumes you can unlock, both tops and bottoms, um, and those are all kind of specific challenges. Um, so there's a there's a lot in the uh, in the campaign mode. Um, and it's one of the reasons, like, you know, we give away this demo for free. And this, this demo has got a lot of stuff in it. There's a lot of fun in there. But we are very confident in, you know, all the more con uh, content we have done for the campaign that we're not, you know, giving anything away. Like, you're just getting just a, a little taste of it, really. Yeah, no, I, I was absolutely surprised by what you just said right now like I, I thought like okay they're showing us this demo but like the demo is really filled with uh, lots of different content like how long can this campaign be right uh, but mm -hmm. 10 hours is a lot of content for for a campaign and if if the game is okay you can have multiplayer you have 10 hours of, of content just for uh if you just want to breeze through it and then you even have more if you try to get perfectionist and of course multiplayer always brings more hours into it then yeah this is mm -hmm. this is a really sizable chunk of content yeah i can i can see why it would take uh time to to actually make a campaign because making a 10-hour campaign is not something you just, <laughs> just <laughs> toss out there like oh sure 10 hours is okay yeah, particularly yeah, for something yeah. that of course i'm playing just the challenge levels but it seems like mm -hmm. it's uh, relatively snappy right so it's like 10 minutes or less like in a game session just going in going out choosing seeing the high score and yeah extending that to to 10 hours is is really really rough uh, at least i see it as like <laughs> it's not an easy task how yeah what were the guiding principles that you used uh to 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 try to build this campaign i know you already discussed a bit about mm -hmm. it but how did you keep not only like the player of course but yourself like you are as you are playing and making a campaign like you also want to feel like it's a good campaign and it's fresh and it's motivating so what do you think mm -hmm. like some kind of tools or guiding principles that helped you develop this this amount of content 
Yeah, it's uh, it's it's definitely been a learning experience. On um, you know, I, I keep going back to it, but like how we're pacing content, how we're divvying it out. Um, but basically, every day, every day you play, um, which is the days are six minutes or sometimes longer depending on upgrades or something. Every day we want there to be something different than the last time you played. So whether you have a new amenity or something has a new upgrade or there's a new um, weather effect or a new alien at there or you know, you've know you got some sort of special goal you're trying to do, um, every day should be different from um, not only your last day but from most of the other days you've played. Um, and so we've learned a lot about how to kind of um, divvy out our content in a way that um, you're constantly feeling like things are changing without just dumping it all right at the start because then, you know, like we could let you have access to all nine min 19 mini games right at the start and then you would have a good time. But, yeah. you know, half an hour later, you might, you know, be like, okay, I've done that, I've done that. Um, and so, you know, it's a lot about kind of breaking up uh, moments for the game um, and also kind of giving time for the player to, to not only have these like crazy um, days where they have you know high energy trying to do everything, but moments in between that where they're making decisions about, okay, I have my layout. Do I want to slot this? Do I want to slot this? You know, which upgrade? Uh, which upgrades do I want to use? Um, maybe there's something going on uh, in Morvin's room, which is kind of a center hub between days, uh, like on the TV. So I gotta go check that out, or um, you know. Um, maybe I want to go to the cost, the wardrobe and change costumes or like um, look up what challenges are there for me to unlock different costumes and stuff. So it's, you know, it's, we've taken this concept of like the score attack, which is, I mean, you've played the general loop, like you've played the loop of like, you start the day, you do the tasks, you try to get a high score. And that that's always going to be kind of the core loop, but it's about giving it different dressings and tweaking it here, tweaking it there where it's never quite the same, and that kind of keeps the players on its on their toes for you know an extended period of time. Yeah, for sure. And and now that you talked about Morvin and uh, a bit of like what do you decide to do with Morvin that you have a central hub, do do mm -hmm. you have like um, a narrative like a cohesive narrative along this campaign? Uh, is it like a little oh, yeah. story? Okay. Can can you talk yeah. to us a bit about what 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 will it entail? Uh, what kind of message you want to 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 bring to the player uh, with that campaign? Yeah, sure. So um, it, the game starts off. Um, you play as Morvan, um, who just moved into uh, the Quick Stop. Your uncle Cosmo owns it, um, and so you're starting to work for him. Um, right when you kind of get your get you know um, get used to kind of working for him, a rival Quick Stop opens up kind of across the galaxy. Um, and that is owned by Dr. Quasar and his convenience cube. Um, so <laughs> his, his quick stop is all automated. Everything's done automatically. Um, it's all machine-based and stuff like that. And so all of a sudden there's a tension between, okay, Cosmo's quick stop. It's about service with a smile, you know, uh, people accomplishing tasks for you versus like um, pure cold automation. Um, and so that rivalry between... Uh, Quasar and Cosmo kind of starts developing more and more. Um, and so a lot of the boss fights are kind of based off of, you know, uh, the, your rival Quasar kind of like planting the tentacle monster in there. Or he could call the health and safety inspector. Um, and so now you have to deal with that. Um, so a lot of that drive is through there. Uh, we take a lot from the classic uh, kind of like man versus machine um, kind of uh, arch type of story um, like one of the classics one is like a, a John Henry ver versus the railroad kind of thing um, so we we take a lot of inspiration from that and kind of try to bring that into our story but I mean there's I think there's like 12 uh, cutscenes in there with you know hand animated stuff um, story driven things going on um, so yeah there's a lot of stuff going on um, it's a lot of fun. You know, we try to cram in as many jokes as we can, uh, as many puns as we can. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's light. It's not going too crazy, but uh, um, no, it's definitely enough to keep you motivated. And, uh, you know, you want to find out what happens next.
yeah, I mean, the, this kind of galactic uh, humor and also kinds of thing, it kind of reminds me a bit of uh, Ratchet and Clank. I don't know if you had any inspiration from that, because even though they sometimes bring a lot of, uh, like, serious uh, matter, let's say, into the their, their stories, uh, like yours is, like Man vs. Machine, that's an actual real problem that we're currently facing and will keep on facing as, as machines and, and technology advances. But they're keeping yeah. so this levity and they also use the puns, they use the humor, they use the color, they use the zany action to to push like, uh, yeah, to, 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 to make people feel like, okay, yeah, this is do or die, this is the end of the galaxy, but it's still like a, a fun romp through time, right? Or through whatever, yeah. just through dimensions. Did you have any inspiration from Ratchet and Clank at all when making this game? Um, definitely. I think we've all played them. Um, and so... Yeah, we've definitely pulled some inspiration from that. Story-wise, I you know, it's hard for us to know where exactly the story came from. Um, none of us are um, professional writers, um, and so it kind of just came out from the brainstorming sessions we had. Well, be funny if this happened, be funny if this would happen. Okay, well, let's make an outline to see how we can get from point A to point B. Um, but, I mean, yeah, it's... I mean, Ratchet & Clank, I think, is a perfect example of kind of that, you know, light humor we like, um, the visuals, obviously, we we take a lot from that. And also just kind of like, it's a little bit more family friendly. I mean, there's still, you know, violence and action in there, but um, it's a little bit more lighthearted, which, uh, you know, we like to make games that uh, make people laugh and, you know, smile and stuff like, even though they can be a little anxiety inducing sometimes, <laughs> um, we, uh, yeah, we want to try to, you know, make people laugh. Yeah, that, that's awesome. And Gonzalo Lopes is asking in the chat if it's Switchbound. We've already uh, answered that question. For now, it's it's only PC. So just uh, pray and uh, and maybe buy the game when it comes out and wishlist it and show it to your friends and maybe it'll come to Switch, right? Yeah, I mean, we would love to have it on there. Um, we'll just see what happens though. Exactly. Uh, well, we're, we're coming up on our time, Ian, but it was a pleasure having you here. Your game is really fun. It's amazing. It's uh, wacky and, and it's really challenging. So like even though I, I was playing right now uh, for like 30, 30 minutes or something, I feel like there's still a lot I can improve and there's yeah. there was constantly like challenges everywhere. And uh, yeah. I hope, I wish you a lot of success. I hope that we can keep having you on IndieX or on other initiatives that we have in the future. And I thank you once again for your time. I thank everyone here in the chat. And of course, don't forget that in a, in a roughly one hour, we're going to have another awesome game here, uh, Oirbo. So be sure to check in for that. And once again, Ian, thank you very much for showing up. Uh, good night and see you soon. Yes, thank you.